Hi and welcome. Today what I'm going to show you is uh, uh, Shelly H&T humidity and temperature. I don't know why it, it shows Spanish, but uh, that's how I got it from Amazon here in UK. So let's see sensor blah 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 Wi-Fi 2.4 gigs web server incorporated SSL. Shelly has some really nice devices, especially those ones uh, the, the ones powered by mains. Are actually really good and um, I don't know about the app though it, it seems to be a bit buggy but uh, we'll, we'll see as we continue so first minus that this sensor comes with it's it has no battery in it uh, it takes one CR123 and uh, it doesn't come with a battery even the cheapest Chinese cheap uh, you know crap comes with uh, even just a you know just a basic battery to do even test it so uh, and because CR123s were not available in my area I had to take my motorcycle go to a big uh, Sainsbury's or uh, I don't know a supermarket and uh, find one and pay 10 pounds for two pieces of these uh, you can get them on Amazon for five pounds uh, but yeah I wanted to test them the same day so that's a big minus. Uh, it would be better if you had, you know, a button cell, a big button cell, but that's, I don't think that's feasible with a Wi Fi sensor like this. So let's crack it open. Let's see what's going on. Let's, it, it has a twist and uh, pull uh, system, but I don't think it's really well made. The, des the design by itself is really nice. I mean, it's it looks really nice to, to place it in your, in your home or anywhere. It comes in white too. But uh, yeah, the the actual function of the twisting is not that great. It's like cracking open an egg or something like that. <laughs> so uh, this is for the battery to rest on. So let's see what's going on here. This is a pairing button or the wake up button, because this sensor, uh, for some reason, it never worked correctly with me. So when I add it into the app, into the Shelly app. Uh, it does connect, it reads the first uh, readings and then it never wakes up again. Uh, it, it states that uh, you have to have a temperature uh, change for it, uh, you know, to, to send data back uh, to the app or wherever you want. Uh, I, I did want uh, to, to use it with Home Assistant, which is unfortunately not possible. Um, and uh, whenever I was trying to wake it up just to, 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 you know, send data to the app, it never did. So I had to repair it again and then it would send the new data to the, to the app. The app is kind of buggy. Um, it, uh, when you first add the sensor, it doesn't show it. So you have to close the app, to, uh, run the app again and search it. And then it's going to show it back to uh, the newly added sensor to you. So, <coughs> excuse me. It has, it has, the app has problems. Uh, and this by itself has problems, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe it works on other people, but uh, to me it didn't work. Uh, for example, pressing that button didn't do anything. It just was blinking the LED, blinking the LED here. And um, <coughs> that's an LED right there. That's actually a, a, a nice idea. It just put the ID to shine right through the, through the board. And, uh, yeah, it never worked. <laughs> I was about to send it back, so but I thought I should keep it, just in case. You never know. Uh, there might be improvements. But it's a Wi-Fi sensor, so this battery that I show you is uh, was a brand new battery. And after fiddling for it, with it for one or two hours, uh, it's now at 47%. So that's a huge minus on the power consumption. So it's 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 not a sensor for I don't think it's a sensor for home automation, or at least uh, so uh, you cannot cannot do anything with it really. You have a programming header, although you cannot program Tasmota or ESP Home or anything on it. Nobody knows how to do it, or at least I don't. If you know, just let me know. Um, but still, if, if you use it with uh, Home Assistant, for example, which was the primary reason that I got it, it won't work. <laughs> anyway, let us let me use my flat screwdriver too. Oh yeah, okay. So this is open. Okay. 
that was easy there is no uh, actual way to stop this from turning around inside the the shell so you have to really aim this one and th aim the the orange uh, uh, middle cover to actually align perfectly so you can actually screw it back on another minus look at the space between the um, the actual sensor and the uh, the holes on the top that means if you don't have any airflow inside your house it will take forever for humidity to reach uh, the uh, the sensor or any temperature changes because air is very difficult to to heat or uh, change its temperature that's why you use heat sinks and uh, things with huge surface uh, surface area but anyway it will take time for this to change uh, so let's see so you can see it has an ESP 8266 directly well obviously for to make it cheaper some power management here uh, PCB antenna here which is uh, there's some flux residue probably from the soldering of this connector there is an STM 32L0 which is really nice and it uh, actually provides the the processing power for all the things that this thing runs a web server the all the SSL and all the other things and well, let's go to the other minus of this thing so this sensor costs 25 pounds which is 33 dollars or 29 euros and for that price I would expect first of all a battery uh, and second a decent center sensor this is a GX HT30 which is a clone of the original uh, SHT from Sensirion which was the SHT30 I think now they ha have gone up to SHT41 really high quality sensors At, in the beginning they were costing 40, 40 euros I think 40 41 euros uh, without having even uh, I2C which is the pro communication protocol for the microcontrollers they were not licensed back then I'm, I'm talking about 10 or 15 years ago um, maybe even more but now Sensirion is uh, so well established in the market they do have I2C they cost like three or four pounds each they have uh, some decent uh, you know accuracy sensors uh, which are like 1.5 percent uh, on humidity or something so i would expect to see a proper you know sensor not like uh, some chinese clone copy crap and if you check it under the microscope you'll see the dye is a bit weird compared to a sensorion clean looking sensor inside so i don't know if it will show well obviously this is the LED that uh, this reminds you of all Nokia phones, which has the had the uh, the lightning just like that. It was behind the PCP. Anyway, uh, yeah, it never works. Uh, at least, at least for now, I don't seem to be able to make it work with uh, Home Assistant correctly. So this will probably gather dust in my <laughs> in my in a drawer. Uh, compared to other sensors, for example, let's say Akara, look at the size of it. First of all, the sensor is right next to the to the port, so that means uh, it it gets a more accurate and faster reading than this one. And this is a Zigbee sensor, for, of course you would expect this to to have more. Uh, for example, this is working uh, over a year. I think it's a bit one year and two months with the same battery, and you know. Yeah, if if you really want standby sensors in in your house, uh, you should probably get a Zigbee sensor like this, for example. This is the Akara. This has a battery life of uh, five centuries, because uh, it has two batteries, two button batteries, and uh, you know it lasts for forever almost. Uh, although this one, just playing around with it, I ate half of my battery. So yeah, Shelly's devices are really good but mostly the mains power devices like the switches they have the energy switches and all these things uh shelly does a really really good job on these but for this one uh it's just uh, i don't know you'll just throw your money away thank you so much uh have a good day and uh see you in the next video